Hello, family. I'll be right back. Waiting on a couple of people to come in. Waiting on a couple of people to come in, family. Here I come, family. Hair call, family. Waiting on a couple of more people to come in. Hair call. Hair call. Give y'all a shout out. Hey, family. How everybody doing today? Thank y'all so much. I know y'all could be doing other things. I appreciate it for y'all coming out, checking me out on this here Saturday before the Easter time. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so glad to see y'all, family. Let me see. Uh, Kindle R. Hey, boo. Hey, that's our outstanding moderators. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Yolanda Mills. Hey, sister. Hey, how y'all doing? T.S. in the house. Good morning, Cafe. Yolanda Mills say, hi, beautiful Cafe and Mars and chat. Henry Santos, how you doing? How you doing from Michigan, huh? Okay, okay. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so glad. Don't forget to hit the like button. Hello, Ernie Williams. How y'all doing? How you doing, brother? How y'all doing? We gonna get right, right on into it because I know a lot of y'all have things to do. You know, it's the Saturday before the Easter and I know the kids are you know, ready to do some things for uh, Saturday. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Tiffany. We're going to talk about Tiffany today. And we're going to talk about uh, the little situation with P. Diddy. Uh, I want to drop some jewels on that, too, uh, about the P. Diddy situation family. Uh, also, that update on Ella. And we're going to touch on Shanquilla. Oh, we got a lot of good hot topics today, family. We really do. We really do. But I want to take this time to say hello to everyone. I want to thank everyone for all of you all support. I mean, it's amazing. It is amazing. Um, the Knowledge Family, man, I, I can't embrace y'all and throw y'all out love enough. I just want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. Definitely. All the viewers, the replay gang, the moderators, awesome moderators, you know. Um, I just greatly appreciate you all. Thank you for the donations that y'all send when we're doing the premiere. Of course, y'all know that be like pre-recorded, but I be in the chat uh, when it comes up live. 
And I be want to thank all of you, all of you. So I appreciate it. Appreciate all of your support in every which way. Thank you for all the new subscribers. We have plenty of new subscribers here in the last month. Unbelievable. Thank y'all so much for y'all support. Thank you for all the subscribers, the old, the new, everybody. Okay. Now, uh, let me get right on into Tell me, Rose, how you doing? How you doing? Appreciate it. China doll, how you doing? Everybody in the country. Okay. I seen a uh, shout out to Kendall R2 because, hey, Tink, how you doing? How everybody doing? Y'all throwing up them hearts and loves. Appreciate it. Right back at y'all. Right back at y'all. But I, I do want to start off with Mr. Dunmore, um, y'all remember Alicia Watts, her case, and shout out to Kendall R for sending me this right here, but um, he wants to get out on bond, okay? Uh, he has a million dollar bond, but they want him to get out on bond without having a secure bond. Okay, so let's let's talk about that right there, family. Uh, once again, hello to everybody. If you would like, okay, that's uh Kendall Paul Cousins. Hello, how you just me, Nene? How you doing? Uh, Paul Cousins said, Happy Easter Cafe and family from London. Thank you for joining us from London. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, I know it's pretty kind of late there. Is it late there or is it real late there? Because we in the day. Let us know. Let us know, Paul Cousins. Yeah, but we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Purple Sex in the house. Susie Sensation in the house. Hello. Hello. And thank you for all the ones who's uh, viewing. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Please, please, please. That's a great way to support the channel for free. It really is. But let me get on this done more. Mm -hmm. Let me check out uh, Mr. Dunmore. Because, see, I wasn't feeling I wasn't feeling what he is trying to be up to right about now. Okay, so this is what he did, family. Him and his lawyers pertaining Alicia Watts. Now, uh, Alicia Watts was found. You know, let me let, let me say this. Let me say this right quick too. Uh, Y'all yeah, already know for the ones in the back. Let's just do this for the live anyway. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for a purpose such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teachers, scholarship, and research. Yes, fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational and personal use tips the balance of favor and fair use. Oh. Directly to his rightful owner. This video is purely for use, fair use. Okay, enjoy, enjoy fair use and entertainment. Now, this Dunmar family, I'm not feeling it. I'm not. I'm. I'm really not feeling it. But I, I know a lot of you may remember uh, Alicia Keys, her boyfriend James Dunmore, which a boyfriend at the time. She thought it was her boyfriend at the time. Yeah, y'all, y'all remember Sister Girl right here, right? Y'all remember Sister Girl, okay, Alicia. But anyway, family, he wants to get out. Uh, he don't like the barn. And what's crazy about it is, check this out, family, or is it just me? It might be just me. I don't know. But check this out, family. They say, Mr. Dunmore, anybody else is my thing. Um, okay. I want to see if I had it. Okay. This is what they say, family. The attorney of James Dunmore who is charged with deleting his then-girlfriend, Alicia Watts, called for a change in bond conditions with a denied, it was denied Monday. Okay, so the judge denied it, but this is what they said. James Dunmore, the man accused of deleting Alicia Watts, will not have his bond changed despite a request from his attorney. A judge denied the request Monday. 
because um, they said it should stay at a secured bond. His attorney wanted to be uninsured, okay? And they saying, no, it got to be a secured bond. They say, no, we want it unsecured. Okay, so what's the difference between secure and unsecure family? A secure bond means that you actually pay money or bail property to secure your release. So right now, he's up under that million dollar bond. He would have to have someone to pay that 10%, I guess, whatever it is, and or they would have to put up some property for him to get out. Well, his attorney said, uh-uh, we don't want none of that. We want the unsecured bond. The unsecured bond family is a bond that means a sign. you sign a document that you say you will pay a certain amount of money if the defendant breaks his bond. So meaning that he wants to get out for free nobody put no money down and he just wants to get out and just he'll just have to sign some documents if he breaks his bond what you know um uh, I, I tell you that's that's why i got up there in the title entitlement entitlement see he think he entitled to walk out with no problems he don't want nobody to have to pay for his bond none of that but his used to be girlfriend that he deleted, he left her in the woods. You know, she was supposed to be going to a concert with him and things like that. And like, we don't know what went wrong. But what we do know is she was found in the woods, deleted. He had her car with her purse. He had her keys. He got all her belongings with him. And she's deceased in the woods. But he say he wants to get out. And he don't want nobody to have to put no money on it. He don't want no secure bond. He want an unsecure bond. That's that entitlement. That's that entitlement right there. But check this out here, family, because this is what I got a problem with. Is this is it me or what? But hey, Sharon Smith. Hey, how you doing? Dane Whedon. How you doing? Jacqueline, how you doing? Uh-oh, everybody in the house. Everybody in the house. Everybody in the house. Okay. Now, check this out. This is what they said. Now, family, y'all tell me, is it me or what? Because uh, I'm, I'm not feeling this at all. It says that his lawyer asked for that to be reduced. Because they labeled Alicia Watts' deletion as undetermined. It's something about North Carolina that always putting undetermined on stuff. They did Shanquilla like that with all the determined in the world. For some reason, they always say undetermined. They did that with Shanquilla. They doing that with Alicia. They put on her thing undetermined. But check this out, family. Check this out right here. So that's why they requested because the autopsy says undetermined, which would say you can't prove that he did anything to her. Okay? Despite that he was the last one with her. He had all her belongings uh, after she was deleted. He had her car, had her car keys. Then he tried to harm himself but it didn't work out too well uh and then um you know he got booked for it but the thing is uh it says the request for Don Moore lawyer came after the state medical examiner said last week they were unable to determine the official cause of um Alicia's demise okay so Dunmore attorney said because of that, it's undetermined. His bond should be changed. The report states that her cause of deletion is undetermined. But check this out, family. Check this out, what they said 
on one of the medical examiners said. Check this out. I want y'all to see. You can see this, the, uh, you know, poke wounds and the pow pow wounds on the skull. What? Family, is it? Family, we're going to have to start, family, we're going to have to start challenging medical examiners, okay? Really need families that's going through this right here needs to start challenging that, you know? Um, taking it to the highest level courts possible if you have to, because this is unreal. It says that uh, some things was detached from Alicia and her remains was so decomposed, you know, to where they couldn't really tell what was really going on. But what they can say is we did see some poke wounds in that skull part. And we did see papa wounds, but it's undetermined. You just said you seen poke pokes and you seen pow pow. I mean, no matter how bad in shape that body was, you still say you was able to see those wounds. So what is it about those wounds that you just said undetermined? It's, 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 I, 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 I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm not with that at all. Um, it just said on the remains, you know, you can see uh, the pokes and the stab. So, but then it says, but when you don't have anything but that, there is very little to utilize in an autopsy to determine what happened. It then becomes undetermined. Stop the press. You say you can't really tell what happened. So you have to say undetermined. But the skull shows pow pow wounds and poke wounds but you you what what is it you can't tell who gave it to her um you can't you, what what is it cuz you can't say you can't you can't say what happened exact words the, uh, exact words in the article i'm gonna let y'all see it there is very little to utilize in an autopsy to determine what happened. So what they're saying is very little that's left of her that they could tell what happened. But then they tell us about the poke poke wounds and the pow pow wounds. Stop the press. Stop. Stop the press. Y'all see. At the bottom. Come on now. Come on now. We really gonna have to start uh challenging this. I don't I don't know um what it's gonna take for you know medical examiners. Um you have some outstanding ones out here that could say bam, bam, this, that, that they could do it. Uh, just off of a piece of something, you know, it's some medical examiners that can do, I mean, you can have a penny in your pocket and uh, you gone and they can say, well, that penny got this type A blood. So it's that person and this, that you got some good ones out here, but it's something that stinks the high sky with the North Carolina ones. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They said the same thing with Shinkula. They said the same thing. Now they're saying this with Alicia Watts. What, which would I could see why James Dunmore lawyer said, "Hey, we wanna, uh, we don't even want that. 
hard bond no more because they said undetermined. Even though we know that this man is very, very dangerous because I went through his history. Y'all remember we went through his history all up in there in Virginia and everywhere else up north. He has a very dark history. Let me see what y'all are saying about that before I go on to the next one. Uh, Rita Love, how you doing, sister? Judy Bullock, how you doing? Everybody, John Q, what's up? What's going on, everybody? Uh, so is it me, family, or what's really going on here? Wow. Uh, Sharon said, wow. So now we're living in a time where we... What we see is not what we uh, exactly, exactly. We're living in a time that's what Sharon said. What we see, we don't really see. Really, come on now, come on now. Unbelievable, that was unbelievable. Their family, unbelievable. I'm trying to see if anybody else said anything pertaining, um, Mr. Dunmore before I move on. Um, Thank you once again to everybody who's joining the chat. Uh, Susan Sensation, what he took her out, shake my head. Yeah, he took her out. Me, Nene, it's some stank stank going on. It is some stank stank going on, and I really don't like it. And uh, these autopsies in North Carolina, I mean, what is it? Because y'all remember Shanquilla father said herself, I would like to know where, where, how many years he had on the job. I would like to know where did he graduate from? I would like to know all that to say undetermined. And here's Alicia Watts, North Carolina as well. Same exact thing, undetermined. It's almost like, what? But but then said just like Shanquilla's um autopsy guy said. Remember, he they said all the atlas cessation and all this and all that and all that, but undetermined. What? This one did the exact same thing to Elise. Different ones, different autopsy people. This person said they seen the poke wounds and they see the power wounds but the demise is ruled under turn family we got to start uh challenging things like this right here really to the highest court i mean it's not like they can't be bought to court either you know uh it's it this right here is totally disrespectful totally dis to me my opinion Okay, uh, so let's go to the next one. Now, I want to say this because I saw this right here. I got a lot of notes, family, because this is a lot I want to tell y'all. But I saw Roland Martin did a call about, he did like an internet call about black people just about a couple of days ago, black people not fact checking what they report and the black news articles that are, and he named them. I'm just not going to name them. Okay. Um, I know one reporter that he did name as the breakfast club and then another black article that's known for they black owned and they known for writing articles, but he was saying that they copying off of TMZ and they not fact checking. And then he was saying about black reporters and uh, content creators and things. He didn't say content creators, but you could tell he was going that way. You see what I'm saying about how they don't fact check what they report on. They just taking stuff from TMZ and stuff like that and just reporting on it and not fact checking nothing. And black people are known for believing whatever they hear um, as if we don't have sense, you know, to kind of shuffle through 
some tales and some truth, okay? But it was the way it was done, okay? Now, um, my thing is here, hold on. Okay. Um, my thing is, he did call out some names, but he was, the, the whole purpose of it was Revolt TV. He was talking about how, hold on family. Okay. Yeah. He was talking about how Revolt TV wasn't sold. Diddy didn't sell Revolt TV. That's what he was saying. That was his whole purpose of that. And he was saying that the black media, the black article, black media that does news articles and some of the ones who be on the airway and some of the ones who report on things, that's that's kind of content creators, okay? Content creators, there's a lot of them have big voices that people listen to, okay? But he was saying they're not fat go out. Let me see what's really going on here. Y'all can still see me family. But anyway, he was talking about how Diddy did not sell Revoke at all. And all that was a bunch of tales. Okay. Um, it was it was it was nothing but tales, and that he did he didn't. She said, I'm buffering. Susie buffering. Who else is buffering? Okay, but anyway, um, he was just saying that Revolt TV wasn't sold, okay? That Diddy did not sell Revolt TV. But my thing is, Diddy sold all his states, okay? He sold all his states of Revolt TV, and he sold it to an anonymous buyer, okay? So he sold everything that he invested in or whatever, he sold it, okay? All his stakes to an anonymous buyer and that anonymous buyer is supposed to come out and reveal themselves who they are pretty soon. But he did sell off all his stakes, okay? But my thing is, I was still trying to figure out what was the mission um, that doesn't happen over at Cafe of Knowledge Channel. And we totally appreciate your great work, fact finding mission. Exactly, exactly, Purple Sex, you know. But I bought that up because what I wanted to say about this here, man, is because he have like 145K on that Pacific video. And I was trying to figure out what was the mission of saying that. Because the way it was worded, it was worded as a dis. It was almost like to discredit the black voices, discredit the black media, because we all know that they do have a powerful voice. But it was given like they don't fact check, they don't look behind, it, and they report on things, and they don't uh they don't do their fact finding. Uh, this and you know they just be going off of what TMZ said or they just be going off of this so they be you know it was almost like they don't fact check anything or they don't fact check what they put out or what they are having content on therefore you could discredit that almost giving a distrust to the black voice you're trying to make a distrust in the black media. Like, don't trust what they say because they don't fact check or they don't look into things. From a lot of YouTubers that I see, they really do fact check some of them and they go, they go deep. They do documentaries on some, some of these people. So they have to be on fact check something. You see what I'm saying? If you look at it, a lot of them, they can do documentaries on some of these stars because they know what's going down. They wasn't even old enough to come up in our era, and they still know what happened in that era. That comes from checking it out and fact-checking it. But it was the way it was done to me, my opinion, it looked at almost like it was a call to discredit the Black voices. 
that's what it was given. I, I'm trying to figure out what was that mission of that particular video. Because, see, what he failed to say is that he put out a video. He interviewed the hen. And he let the hen come on his channel and tell her straight she lied like a rug. Lied like a rug. So then that means he didn't fact check, right? And that was just about, what, two, three weeks ago? So that's why I was trying to figure out what was this mission about. Because you just did it about three weeks ago. You let the crackling hen, Tiffany Henyard, come on your platform and lie like a rug. She literally said on there that she didn't create her charity, which there was videos of her telling people a while back, please donate to my charity. I started it. It's up under me. I'm, I'm running the charity. She was saying all that, but she got on his show and said, he asked about a charity. She said, you know what? I don't even know who set that up. I don't even, I mean, you know, people just use my name for a lot of different things. I don't say nothing, but I don't, I don't even know who created that. That lady can lie so smooth, and that's what the, people like that cannot be trusted. But the main thing is, he did not fact check her before she got on there. He let her on there, and when she said all that, he rolled with it. You know why he rolled with it? Because he didn't fact check it before she got on there. Mm -hmm. But then he tried to come back and straighten it out about, a couple of days later after his viewers and everybody was upset that, man, that lady lied to you and you ain't say nothing. You sit up there and let her tell all kind of tales on now. Oh, I ain't know. I, well, let me go back and check this. And then he did a video with himself correcting her tales that she told him. But the point is, he didn't fact check Tiffany Henyard. But he had the nerve to come up and make a whole show about how black people believe everything they read. And then the black people who are putting it out is not fact checking. Sound like, uh, it sounds like, I, I don't know what that mission was. And like I said, it felt like it was a mission to discredit the voice. That's, that's, that's the mission it was given to me. You know what I'm saying? It, it smelled very double standard, very two-faced and very gatekeeping. That's what it sounded like to me. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry. That, that's just what it sounded like, you know, because in that whole video that he was saying about how um, black news medias don't fact check what they write and how some of them report on things and he named the breakfast club uh was repeating what tmz said and didn't fact check because he know diddy ain't so revoked well diddy did sell off his shares of revolt to an anonymous buyer you know we don't know who that person is but they said that person's supposed to come out very soon how soon? We don't know. But the thing is, that whole time he was doing that show, discrediting those people, he never once said, I made a mistake and didn't fact check myself. And I rolled with the Tiffany Henyard story. And I let her come on my show and tell all kind of bogus fool lies. Didn't say nothing about that. So that's why I said, what was the mission for doing that? Okay. Um, let me see uh, who else. Um, John Q said, her lying is very dangerous indeed, especially for the people of both Dalton, yep, and Thornton's township. It is. she. I mean, she can lie so quick. She can lie so quick. 
Oh, John Q said uh, he's still trying to come back from that poor interview. So, John Q, you do know what I'm saying. Yeah. And, um, you know, we kind of, he, he is trying to, and John Q is right. He is trying to still recover off of that poor interview. But the thing is, to come back a couple of weeks later and say how black ownership articles who you know news articles black owns don't fact check they get everything from tmz and that some of the people who report on stories such as the breakfast club because that's what he said such as the breakfast club they even rolled with a story and didn't fact check it well actually if a man sell off all his shares he really is not in it no more i mean you selling all your shares off you know, so I just felt it strange that he did that after he didn't fact check his own stuff with Tiffany Henyard. Called out everybody else, but the show he did with Tiffany Henyard. So that's why I felt like, what was that mission for? Was that a call to not listen to the black voice or not to believe the articles? What was it? I, I just don't know. I would like to find that out. I, I would like for him to tell us that. But uh, anyway, it, it was something about, let me let me say this before I get on to uh, Diddy. Let me say this, and let me see if y'all have something to say, too. I know there's some uh, sellouts, T.S.C. Uh, Purple Sack said, oh, shame on, yeah, uh-huh. Um... Yeah, yeah, T.S., I did see that uh, there. Uh-huh. That sorority sister. But let me say this. And I know it might touch on a lot of people, but for some reason, our age bracket, because Roll, he Roland is about my, he's in my age bracket. A lot of these older ones, Diddy, um, a lot of them are Kelly. A lot of them are, are kind of in the uh, age bracket of us. But it's something about we have some good, good, good um, black men that grew up in our area. And then you had some that was tainted. Okay. Um so let me say that because I see that a lot of people, they looked at um, the situation that's going on with Diddy and allegedly what he's been doing out here and things like that. And a lot of people are so shocked at what they see in some of these lawsuits, okay? Especially Cassie's, okay? A lot of people weren't even shocked at all, family. They wasn't even shocked at all. Not not in my era, they wasn't. Okay. We talking about talking about about 45 and up. Okay. And I'm trying to figure out what it is about our new generation that us old heads are so jealous of. That's just like being jealous of our own kids. Okay. Um, because most of the people that this man here was talking about like they don't fact check they don't do this they don't do that it was basically some of our kids on the internet okay um 20s and late 30s things like that but it seems like it's a jealousy old heads are jealous of the generation that we raised why is that i don't understand it and I thought I need to get that out because I wanted to get that out because of this. They have a voice on the internet and they have a very powerful voice. And this younger generation in between the 20s and the 30s and the early 40s, um, if they smell stank, stank, they tell you they smell stank, stank. If it don't look right, they tell you it don't look right. But see, let me tell you all something about Diddy situation which is just not diddy okay 
we grew up in the era, and I want y'all to listen, and, and you know, a lot of people, it might be hard to hear this, but this is for the younger generation that we raise our sons and daughters, because I, I have a son right here that's damn near pushing 40. Okay. So um, this is for them, that generation. Let's say 40 on down. Okay. Check this out. When we was raised up, when we was growing up, we had a lot of different talent shows. We had a lot of different parties. We had a um, lot of different sleepovers and things like that. But there were so many people in the 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s that it seems like they was trying to destroy women in general and some of the young gentlemen as well, okay? Now, understand, you had a set of men that's in our bracket, upstanding men, but you had a lot of them that was tainted men, okay? And we grew up in the era where Man, they had the freak neeks in Atlanta. New York had a lot of club and under on all through the south part, had a lot of different things going on. And y'all have to understand in that era, our parents was fighting civil rights. Then you had us who was striving and surviving not to get caught up in the destruction that they had laid out for us to do. And what I mean by that is, you know, it was hard being a female and I could talk for that. And I was born and raised in New York City, but my parents, father from Georgia, mother, Alabama. So that's why I spend a lot of my time throughout the Southeastern region. Okay. Um, but the thing is, our parents kind of focused on civil rights and things like that. Us, now we go out and we go out to the clubs and all that stuff like that. We had people literally Women will go to the club at these times. They weren't thinking about, they just wanted to party. They weren't thinking that stuff would go in their drinks. They wasn't thinking that they would be all word. They wasn't thinking that they was going to be taken advantage of. You had the freak neat. See, all that was almost like a pull and call to destroy a lot of women and men. New York had some things going on. The whole, th throughout the United States. And it was like women were definitely a target. It don't matter what color your skin was. But because I was in kind of a, a, a mixed crowd, like I would be around different ethnic groups, it was all over the place. It was all over the place. What Diddy is uh, allegedly accused of, that was that was what women were going through growing up. Just so happened, I'm glad that I had the type of parents that was very strict. You know, and y'all already know that my father's military because I've had his flag up here with me, but very, very strict. So I didn't fall in that bag, but I I did go to those parties i will go to parties not knowing those was the type of parties but people let me understand you know it was a lot of things going on in our age bracket and that's why a lot of our age bracket men are so quiet not all our men but i'm saying you talk about oh diddy friends ain't saying too much or nothing for some reason back then in the 70s 80s 90s, early 2000s, it seemed like the behavior was acceptable. It's sad to say. 
And you heard one rap song. What is it? Ice Cube. Women ain't nothing but B's and H's. That's how we was treated. And I can say we because I grew up with them in that era. That's how a lot of women were treated. But we had some gentlemen out there. But boy, it was like a needle in a haystack. Because the corrupt ones kind of took over. It don't matter if you went to a concert. Your parents will buy you a ticket to go to a concert VIP. You get in VIP, and then when you leave VIP, oh, they got an after party. Oh, and because they're a star, you don't know. You go to the after party, and then you sit around. And even if you say, oh, no, I don't drink, even if you they give you a punch, something is in it. You're gone. You're not either blacked out, fainted, something. That's how women were being treated back then. They really was. Like they was B's and H's. You know? And so what's on that report? I don't know if it's true or not. But I do know that went on throughout the United States. Throughout the United States. They have the parties. The, a lot of women did not know that, yeah, they want to party. And then you have some men to sit back, watch a woman twerking and acting crazy or whatever, and they filming it. And then it makes it say, the woman is ratchet. But what they ain't telling you is what they put in that woman drink to make her act like that. Well, then they break out the film. See, we was growing up with a whole lot of disrespect. A lot of disrespect. A lot of us women made it out of it. And a lot of us women didn't. You know? And you see that a lot of them was hooked on certain substances and life didn't turn out the way it was. Used in the going to parties, doing things because the people so some of the you have a girl, you say, Oh, she beautiful, she this, she that. You see, her about two years later, look like the dump stun hit her. Me and two, but these parties, these freak nicks, these underground parties, some of these concerts, they had concerts in the club, you know, because they wasn't selling out big venues like they're doing now. They was going to big major clubs and performing all up in there, putting stuff in there. Everybody drinking tainted drinks. And it's for the women and for some of the men. And then you had, I've known a couple of women myself that, Things has happened to them for going to concerts that they thought got VIP tickets and thought it was okay, whatever, and then something happened to them. So it's not only stars that was, some stars that was participating in this type of terrible behavior. It's all over the streets, especially with people who just have money, but they ain't stars. They would throw parties. Invite a whole bunch of women over and some men. And the trick is, get the women messed up. And then you have some women that had kids back then, didn't even know who the parent is because they don't want, I mean, the who the father is, because they don't want to say that they was all worthy. So then you have some kids now that don't even know who their fathers are or the mother won't tell them who their fathers are. And probably it was in a situation that, hey, I thought I was going to a party. I drunk something, fell out. I don't know. Then two weeks later, you can't find the dudes. You don't want to tell nobody you've been R word, you're embarrassed. I know a couple of friends like that right today that was embarrassed of what happened to him. And back then, it's almost like, see, now it's a whole different era. See, they're not playing that game now. See, something you do something to a woman, they go and they report it, things are getting done. Back then, uh uh, it was damn near like, why? 
Why was you there? Why you go to that party? Well, why did you go to the after party? Well, I just wanted to go because, you know, they was famous or, you know, because I know them or or because I I didn't know. So it was an embarrassment. They would treat you as if you was the problem of why that happened to you and nothing would get done about it. But nowadays, tables don't turn. See, they not playing that. And see, the guys and some women was tainted too. It was some women messing with the younger bringing them. They recruiting. Dudes that have parties. You ever been to a club family or been around somewhere and some of you probably have and some of you probably ain't, but pay attention to it because OG know about, you know, know about this stuff, you know. Glad I didn't get caught up in it, but I know about it. That's why I didn't because I was always spiffy on my thinking. Oh, no, this shit yeah, don't look right. And uh, what is y'all putting in that drink? Uh, nah, it's time for me to go. I don't like, oh, it ain't nothing. It's it's the, it, it just make it taste like lemon. It just make it taste like strawberry. I don't want no liquor that tastes like strawberry. If I want that, I will order that type of drink. I don't need you pouring no extra stuff in my, mm-mm. I'm gone. You know, but back in the day, it was like that. It don't matter where it was in the industry or people who had money. Or whatever. It was like that. Women were being ran through hard. Off of things like that. And it wasn't nothing being done. But have y'all ever went to a. Party or gathering or a club or something like that. And some people just walk up to you out of nowhere. Be a female. Two females. You partying with your girls. Or you partying with your guys or whatever. And then females come up to you. Or males come up to you and start holding the conversation and say, yeah, we got, we, we, we partying right over there. Shoot, we popping bottles. We, we doing it big over here. Come on over here. They done picked you out the crowd. That was the game. They picked you out the crowd. And then you going on over there and you go to start drinking. All of a sudden, you done fell out. You don't even know where you at. You're dizzy. There's room spinning and all that. Then they take you with them. Then you're supposed to have some homegirls that you know supposed to be watching out for you. They done too, because they drinking the same stuff. Then everybody wind up in the hotel room. How the hell did we get here? I just wanted to party. Y'all said y'all were popping bottles, and I'm thinking one of y'all might like me and may think I, you could be my boyfriend or something. Uh-uh. The whole time, they setting you up. It was terrible. In our days growing up. And to see how quiet a lot of the people are when it comes to Diddy's situation, whether it's true or not true, it's very quiet. Because nine times out of ten, they were part of two tricking people. Throwing these type of events. And it was aimed at women and it was aimed at some men. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm talking about, oh, he, he was messing, he messing with men. But they were doing it all then. They were spiking the men and spiking the women. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All that type of behavior was going on. But then, It was almost like it was crushing the women, you know? Then they wanted to be dancers. They wanted to be video dancers, and they wanted to be this, and they wanted to be that. Going through pure D hell. Going through pure D hell. It really was. So that's why it's so quiet. Because a lot of people in my generation, 45 and up, 50, 55, 60, 70, they ain't saying nothing. They ain't saying nothing. Because nine times out of ten, they participated in that. That's why they ain't saying nothing. And for the ones who didn't participate in it and not saying anything, they was a victim of it and don't want to say nothing. But they guarantee you they sitting back saying, yep, 
Because when I was at that party, I was done like that too. But, I, you know, I ain't going to say nothing because I kind of profited off that person. It was a lot. It was a lot. And what gets me is our generation, females and men, because it was some women right along with some of this stuff to help the man bring in more women and tear them down. And what I mean by tear them down, you know, uh, spike them, do whatever you do, do whatever you do. And those women ain't really the same no more or grow up with some trauma. It was happening all over, even in sororities. Some of them, I've been to them. So I, you know, hey, I got proof I've been to them. It happens everywhere. It was terrible in our age bracket. Mm -hmm. You had to keep your head on the swivel. And it was sad. But nowadays, our kids, we have raised our kids. Hey, look here. Look out for this. This don't look right. Then you need to say something. Now, those are the ones who are on the internet and stuff that's telling it like it is. And guess what? Our age bracket, I don't like that content creator. I always running their mouth. I always got something to say about me. I, I don't know why they digging in my background. Or why they, because they was taught that they don't hold. They don't hold their breath. Mm -mm. They see it. They call it out. It stink. They tell you it stink. It's a whole nother era. The world has shifted now to where people are being held accountable for what they do. Unlike, it seems like, our era. It just it just was not there. I'm sorry. And I have traveled. I can't just say I, I was in New York. I was in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Alabama, New Orleans, everywhere. My family traveled. My father was military. It was everywhere. Women was being targeted and dogged and men too. So I'm not shocked. And a lot of my age bracket is not shocked. That's why they're not saying anything. Some of the things they see on those lawsuits. If it's not true, we know some stories very similar and familiar to it. Either we had a friend that been through it, or we had a family member that went through it, or either you went through it yourself. And it was sad. It was sad. And then, not only was they doing that, they started making the men go after each other. So then it started being... East Coast, West Coast war. The women are being, uh, you know, put stuff in and falling out and don't know what's going on. It was just a target. And the young ones, they talk, the younger and the younger, and they, and it was going down to kids. Our age bracket, we could be 25 years old. Some of them was messing with 14 year old. Why? It was tainted. You know? So that's the way it was. That's just the way it was, family. You know? Uh, am I froze? Let me see. Uh, so, and it seems like our generation of men and women are still trying to hurt our kids. And you, you wonder why it was a lot of single mothers. I just told you why. Not the majority of it, but most back in our era, the men was all, most of them, it was some good men. We had some good men now. Don't get me wrong. We got some outstanding men. But then we just had the ones that was tainted. It's almost like, they was a shadow over a lot of things. You know, that's all I'm saying. And you had a lot of chicks that wind up having pregnancies 
with dudes who weren't ready to be in a relationship or want a relationship with you or whatever, and you wind up being a single parent. Because see, they own another whole set of another mission. Cause they ain't they ain't they ain't, they ain't through with that what they doing. Then all of a sudden, you wind up being baby number eight, baby mama number eight. That's what was going around. You baby number nine, baby mama number nine. Babies everywhere. Come on now. And it done got to where, to me, it's almost like um, this still, our generation is still trying to destroy our kids, our own kids. The hell was Diddy doing with Young Miami anyway? He's lived his life. She should have been able to live her. But that's that recycle, that repeat pattern. They dogged our the women in their generation. Now they want to dog our daughters and sons. Come on now. And we got some good men out here that talks up. And I appreciate that. It's a lot of old school black men on YouTube that I hear kicking that knowledge. They kicking that truth. Sometimes they kicks it in a harsh way that I know some women don't like that. Like who he calling that? It's, 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 it's almost like, you know, you're going to get your feelings hurt hearing the truth, but it's some lot of old school men out there that's kicking that truth. I don't see a lot of, old school women like myself kicking that truth. I really don't. Not to our youngsters. You know? And I applaud all the YouTubers that, you know, like I said, my son pushing 40. Okay? That's why I tell people, hey, leave me alone. Leave old lady alone. Okay? I ain't, I ain't messing with y'all. I ain't trying to mess with y'all. I do my own thing, stay in my own life, but I like what you do. Most of you. But some of them I ain't feeling too well. You know, y'all know what I'm saying. OK, but what I'm saying is they do the research, they kick, they, they kick in that thing. And a lot of people in our generation don't like it. Point blank, period. They don't like it. You hear a 50 year old man married a 19 year old girl. Why? Still trying to destroy. You destroyed the women in your era. Now you want to destroy the women in your era, kids. So it has to stop somewhere. And I'm glad that they buckling down on a lot of things. You know, they taking a lot of accusations serious. And they dig into it to see if it's true and if it's not true. But I do think if things don't turn out to be true, that those people need to be prosecuted too. You just can't go around talking about somebody did this to me, somebody did that to me, and then come to find out they didn't do nothing to you, and you get to walk away, and that person's reputation is tarnished. I think that that person needs to be held accountable who lied as well. You know? But that's what we went through through our era. So it's not shocking what was on Cassie thing. What is on that Jones man. It's not shocking at all. Is it true? I don't know. But I do know that that was going on ever since the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s. And it destroyed a hell of a lot of families. And we can all feel the after effect right to this day. Mhm. Mm so uh what y'all saying? Uh a lot more some celebrity officials be called up. What's up, uh Barbara Jackson? Thank you by saying I look nice. I appreciate it, appreciate it. Tink, true back in the day, the game back. Yes, it was yeah. Uh-huh. And um 
It was terrible. Check yourself. How you doing? How you doing? I was a kid in the 80s, and the news reporters was talking about the date. Yeah, they was talking about the little stuff they was putting in there, and that, and it, it was terrible. You're right, Sister Cafe, Ernie Williams. Yes, sir. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. And 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 I know Ernie Williams and T.S., um, OGs, you know, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And we had men like Ernie Williams, who's in the chat. We had some good men, for real. But we also had a hell of a lot of bad men. Y'all wouldn't imagine what went on at that freak meet. People plotted for that time to come. That was a time for them to do what they want to do, have their way. And it was terrible for a woman, for growing up myself in them eras it was terrible you had to keep your head on a swivel you really did and it just had got to the point where um you know my friends won't go to concerts and things like that it just got to where now nah, i pass because i just got tired of always you supposed to go somewhere to have fun not to look every time somebody pour something or you know you got to take a drink with you everywhere you go or your friends say let's go to this party and ah, i don't want to go to that party oh but you know that you know them they, they they be rocking they be rocking yeah you know them but how about the other 80 people at that party you know so you just had to keep your head on the swivel all the time and things like that went on that was inside of those lawsuits everywhere, not just stars. Any any dude that had money, any woman who had money and all that, that went on. They throw backyard parties or house parties or whatever. That same junk went on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you had older men trying to talk to the younger girls because I was one of the young girls before. And you see, you ain't I ain't nothing but 16 years old, 16, 17, and a 30-year-old coming up to you trying to talk to you. What? You my granddaddy. I don't want to talk to you. Then they throw out, they throw out money, have wards of money in the cars, and then all that. No, my daddy got money. That's why I was just so glad that I was raised how I was, because I was able, like, that don't mean nothing. I got that. My dad got that. My mom got that. You know, and I just, they was very, very tight and strict. You know, but the thing is, I was able to see a lot. I really was. They used to have a club on base. I'd be like, oh, dad, dad, I want to go to that club on base. No, you ain't. And he about to know what was going on. No, you ain't. You ain't going to that. No, no, mm -mm, you ain't going to that. Get them books up in there. Huh? Or we'll go skiing next week, but you ain't going to that. All right. You know, but what I'm saying is that's how it was, family. That's just how it was. So, no, we not shocked our era. So, people want to know how come they so quiet and all that stuff. People, a whole lot of people are quiet. That's basically why. Either it was a, there was a part of it or either they was a victim of it. And they don't want to say nothing because they basically agree with what that's, what, what, what's being said. So, they just stay quiet. And it's a lot of us that wasn't like me. It's a lot of us like we wasn't in it, but we damn sure we we knew what was going on. You know, we knew that we barely escaped that type of mess ourselves. So that's why stuff is so quiet because I noticed that our thirty year olds and our kids, uh, and I call them kids, thirty year old, they grown. You know, they grown. Uh, but I'm just saying that generation behind us. Was like, you know, they ain't saying nothing. They ain't, they ain't saying nothing. And then you got to watch the ones who defends it. Mm hmm Because that means most likely they was a part of exactly what was going on. Just on a different level. Mm-hmm. And old Cry Reese, because I heard that. I, I, I heard that he had, he so confused. Why is uh, Cry Reese? So confused. That's what I want to know. Oh, cry Reese. Uh, he he said, I just, you know, I, you know, uh, he he's he praying for Diddy and then he's praying for the victims. How you pray for both of them? 
I'm saying, I mean, I know you do, but I'm trying to figure out, Tyrese, you confuse yourself because one minute Tyrese have on a Jesus role and he wants to do something. Then the next minute he crying in Home Depot or something about they ain't treating them right or they his credit card won't go through or they won't let somebody else use his credit card he don't know what to do then you see him again in the arguing with dj envy and him and dj envy going back and forth and then you see him again he crying about child support and he don't know you talk bad about the baby mama then all of a sudden he holy see you can't trust people like that tyrese we just can't trust you when you do that we just can't. I'm sorry. We just, we just can't. We just, you sound confused. You confused. Why are you so confused? You know? And he always jumping in anything that's t- trending. He got to jump in it. I, I just don't get it. And then one minute he wanted to be Mexican. He did something, said, I wish I was Mexican. So we really don't want to hear nothing. You got to say, uh, Tyrese, it would be best for you just go somewhere and sit in the backyard and chill out, watch a little TV, and wait on Van Diesel to call you for the next Fast and Furious, because we don't want to hear that you got to say. You ain't doing nothing but messing the whole program up. You confused. You know, um, thank y'all. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. Oh, uh, who else all here that I haven't called out? Rodney Brown, salute family, salute, salute, salute. I think I called out Tink, salute, 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 salute. Salute to all y'all. Salute to all y'all. Then, um, so, 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 yes, you know, they, they, they ramsacked, uh, Diddy thing. But y'all remember me saying this right here. I did a. I did a video on Diddy a while back, and everybody was talking about how his L.A. homes was. Um, check this out right here. Y'all remember me saying this? Harvey Pierre. Yeah, the uh, Harvey to- Pierre. That's the uh, executive that Diddy has, that Diddy did have on his bad boy squad that's his assistant but they both was employed by bad boys records okay this was the diddy's uh president of bad boys and then the out, other lady was his assistant and she said that every time they went somewhere and traveled somewhere you know we talked about that during the live that he the force Hank paint with okay and said that he did it in different states different countries so that pools now they can open up if they wanted to other states and countries can open up a case on this here man and did his company if that's what happened so i said it's just a broader things that can happen what i say family see this was check this out that video right there what did it say, family? December 3rd. So, December, January, February, March. Three months ago. See, the knowledge family be on. I said, that's why I let y'all hear it again. Three months ago, that was that video. I said, when Cassie did that thing, I said, She's saying different cities, different states, that girl, that girl that, not Cassie, but the other chick that says the Harvey Pierre did something to her in this state, that state, this state. I told y'all that would most likely would bring on an investigation in the other states. You notice who, what state was missing in that raid? What state was missing in that raid? New York. I find it quite strange that the the, uh, house property, nothing got touched in New York, but it did in L.A. and Miami. Mm -hmm. Because, see, you remember the mayor gave Diddy a key to the city. 
Why? We do not know. Because like I said, rumors like this have been circulating around Diddy ever since the early 90s, about 91, 1991. Okay? And the thing is, they ain't touched the New York homes. Upstate New York, New York, period. Nothing in the tri-state. Nothing in the Big Apple, what we used to call it. Nothing. Only Miami and L.A. Mm-hmm. Why is that? But anyway, uh, anyway, that was the video that I said then that it would take an outside states to open up something because everybody was saying, is New York going to do something? Is New York don't see it. I mean, you know, that's what it's given now. It, it's going to have to be another state. It's going to have to be another state. It's going to have to be another state. That's what it's given. That's what it's given. But New York City wasn't, it, New York, none of Diddy homes in New York was touched uh, at all, you know. But Diddy, uh, everybody was saying Diddy homes got raided. Them ain't Diddy homes. Them his kids' home. All of them have homes. And that, that, that home was in his daughter's name in L.A., and then I think the other one in Miami, I think that one is the son's name or something like that. But Diddy has, Diddy, Diddy is not crazy, though. It looked like Diddy has pulled out, he, he sold his shares of Revolt. He's getting rid of a lot of stuff, I guess. But a lot of stuff, his mom, I think the ones in New York, his mom's name is in them. Allegedly, you know. Yeah, then he ain't got nothing. He, he ain't got too. He ain't got too much in his name to put that down there. Um, but you know his do, his uh, lawyer was talking about how they raised. You can't tell nobody how to raise something. They was like, oh, they tore up this and they did that and that. You can't tell them people how to how to how to bust up in something. Point blank, period. They gonna bust up in it, rather you like it or not. They did bum rush. Uh, Diddy, but my thing is, everybody was talking about and young Miami. Please keep your mouth closed. Look, how many times we have to tell her to just be quiet, you know? Just be, but see, that's another thing I'm talking about. It seems like everybody that kind of got um in this or whatever is our kids' age. You know, his sons had to be, you know, detained until they looked over stuff. Why? You know, it just shows you the type of parenting, you know, and that's the rich parenting of Diddy's doing. Look what, what, look, look what we see. So he ain't the only brother like that, you know. And there's some sisters out there just like them, you know? But the thing is, is that young Miami, she's this next generation. She's pulled into this 55-year-old man stuff. His kids pulled into this 55-year-old man stuff. You can't find no 55-year-olds uh, in the mess with you. Like on their level, you got to keep pulling the kids in it. That's what I'm talking about. Then the the mule, they said he was the uh sugar booger mule. They arrested him. He 20 something years old. What 25 years old? Why are we destroying our own kids? And the thing is, family, is that when I saw the mule come out, supposed to be the sugar booger mule, I said, well, dang, he can't be the sugar. Somebody got this mixed up. He can't be the sugar booger mule. 
It's no way he the sugar move. Mm -mm. He ain't. He, look at him, family. Did y'all see him? He looked like he is the user. I'm sorry. I'm. I, you know what? I, I'm sorry. He looked like he eating the sugars. Okay. I'm sorry. Y'all can get y'all. You know. I'm going by the boys. Look. I ain't never seen the mule sugar mule look that bad. I just ain't. And Lord knows me. I was kind of glad he got apprehended because it looked like he needs help. It, it he just he just just didn't it looked like he don't have he, you know don't take too much more of that uh we no don't take no more of that that sugar baby no 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 that mule was on his last leg y'all say it was the sugar mule I say no he was muling something else with Diddy okay I don't think it was the sugar mule okay because he looked it too bad that boy looked it bad. I'm sorry. Y'all could call me what you want to say. The boy didn't look like he, he gives out nothing. He looks like he takes it in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said, they're going to talk about his, his mule just been arrested. And then they brought the boy out there. I said, that ain't how the mules look that I know of. That mule, they on his last leg. He, he is he is taking his own supply. It ain't no way that he's the mule. Mm -mm, no, no, ain't he was. Um, mm -mm. hygiene didn't look good. Outfit didn't look good. Nothing. Hair wasn't groomed. Just didn't have the suitcase. He didn't have that mule. Look, that ain't no mule. That mule was gone. That mule was tore up from the float up. One-legged mule. Hey, that was a one-legged mule. I'm sorry. Y'all ain't finna tell me that was no mule. Now, that's one thing that I might have to dispute on that uh, their lawsuit thing that they say they got going on uh, that, that's, that's, that's inside of the lawsuit. That's one thing I might have to dispute. That ain't no mule. That ain't no sugar mule. I'm sorry. You can say what you want to say. He's sugaring something else with Diddy, okay? He's a sugar with D Diddy, you know, that's. but I can't see the supply. Mm -mm. Y'all ain't finna tell me. I know what a mule looked like, and that ain't it. That one was on one leg. And, uh -uh. Mm -mm. And, and if he is, ain't no more. They had said he had enough on him to use. That's why the bond was so low. So what kind of mule is that? Mules have a suitcase. Mules have a duffel bag. He didn't have that. Whatever he had was in his pocket. So don't just say they tried. They, I'm telling you, they tried to play in our face with that one. They tried to play in our face. That ain't no mute. That ain't no mule. Okay, I'm sorry. Tell you, call me what you want to call me. Mm -mm. Uh, they eye of the storm. Well, how you doing? How you doing? Uh oh, K E Y girl. You know I can't really what K K A W E H I Kawahi. How you doing? How you doing? You can break it down in there if you want to. Yes, that boy, he was like a broke down donkey. Yes, I said, uh-uh, that boy ain't supplying nothing around here. Y'all could, y'all could tell somebody else that. Y'all can't convince me of that. Mm-mm, mm-mm. That was not no, uh, mule right there. Y'all come with something else. We already know, uh, how did it roll most likely. That's because I'm going to tell y'all right now. If you look at the sugar mule that was supposed to be in the sugar mule, you know, if you look at his, he played basketball in the day, you know, he's only 25 years old. So you go back and evidently his basketball career didn't work out, but it seemed like he should have did something else besides fooling around this old man Diddy. Okay. But the thing is, if you look at his previous pictures, very nice gentleman, had it looked like he had his stuff together, looked like he grew up pretty well. And like I said before, you mess around and go to one of these parties and you get either turned out or burnt out, dropped out. That's just how it go. 
You know, you got to keep your head on the swivel. And it looked like he didn't have his head on the swivel at all. He didn't even have his head on the stick. He didn't have nothing because he looked totally, totally bad. Okay. I'm sorry. So don't convince me that uh, he this big time nothing. Okay. Uh, mm mm. Mm mm. Mm -mm. They ain't supposed to be dipping in their own supply. I'm sorry. And he he didn't have nothing on him, family. They said that he only had enough to use, like for his self-use. I believe that. Mm -hmm. So what kind of mogul or mule is that? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He was there for something else. He was on the getaway for Diddy. That's all that was. They don't want to say he was on the getaway with the man. But, hey, I'm old school. You can't fool me. He was taking the trip with Diddy. Point blank, period. That's what is given. That's what is given. He was right there with him because his show wasn't given. No big time sugar mule. That have some stuff, you know what I'm saying, supply. No, he don't. Look at the man. The man, it ain't but 50 pounds soaking wet. He tall, but he ain't but 50 pounds soaking. And all them pounds come from the height. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me nothing about that, boy. Darlene Chestnut, salute, family. Salute, salute. Karen Parker, salute, 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 salute. Okay, now Fanny Willis, uh, yeah, y'all know she uh stepped down. She didn't step down, but Nathan decided to step down so she can keep the case. Uh, I, I don't, I don't understand how come the employee have to step down and not the boss. The most confusing thing I've ever heard. Have y'all ever heard of that? Where the boss can be messing with someone and then they get rid of the employee and the boss stay. Well, the boss is the one that is over the employee, you know, get some type of reprimand or something. Woo, Lord. But anyway, uh, Fanny done opened up her mouth and she don't know how to keep her mouth closed either. No, she don't. Um, she's talking about since all this is over with, the train is still coming. She's saying that, you know, her train is coming for Trump or whatever. Well, she done opened up her mouth and now they done opened up another. Uh, the judge allowed for an appeal to be heard about that case. So she, she should, I don't know why she don't know how to sit down, be quiet. She full of herself entitlement once again entitlement that's all that is entitlement and now now they finna get her as well uh back up in there for that appeal they talking about her appeal um she don't know how to keep her mouth closed but i do think that the brother you know fair is fair i don't think that nathan should have took that hit by herself uh that he had to pull out so that she can remain on the case. No, I think that both of them should have had to pull out and let somebody else come in. You know, that was very, I feel that's disrespectful to Nathan. You know what I'm saying? Because he can't mess with her without her approving the relationship. So I just felt that was very, very wrong on that end right there. Um, Tiffany Henyard. Did y'all know I had to put Tiffany in time out the other day? Tiffany was in the chat the other day, family. And I had to put her in time out. Yes, I did. I had to put her in time out because she ain't know how to act. She ain't know how to act. She said something and I didn't like what she said. So I put her in time out. Um, let me see what... Uh... Hey, shout out to Mike Nettles. How you doing? Hell to the lady in red. Big Mike in the house. <laughs> how you doing? Spreading the knowledge and insight. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, shout out to Big Mike. Yes. Uh, Karen Parker, shout out to you as well. I don't know if I mentioned that, but yes, 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 yes. But yeah, so Tiffany, the hen, 
she came and I had to put her in time out the other day. Then I noticed, family, that we checked on her podcast because we wanted to see what she was talking about. And her podcast is down. Okay. Her podcast is down. It's not on YouTube anymore. And she did a TikTok video. I think it was yesterday or something. Calling us snitches. Yeah, it's some snitches out there. And uh, my podcast is no longer up because it's some snitches out there. And uh, y'all could just see my On The Move Something podcast on Spotify. You call it what you want to call it. You call what may I say snitches told on her podcast. So then that means you in agreements Something you doing wrong to call people snitches. This is the type of mayor. This is the type of person they got running their town. And I'm quite sure she might try to call in here today because she she be having a lot to say to cafe all the time. All the time. But I can say she's listening to every word I say. Because y'all remember when I talked about her shirt. I talked about her clothes. I said, why she don't dress no better than that? How come she look like she got hand-me-downs? How come all that? And how about when she did the TikTok video trying to call everybody a snitch? She had on a two-piece suit, family. She had, but it, it had a whole bunch of colors in it. She still didn't get it quite right. But that's preschool. She went in the coloring book and the crayons. And she had yellow, blue, green, pink, purple, burgundy. It was a vest. But it was better. It was better, family. Uh, it was a two-piece suit on. But it did look like it come out the crayon box, okay? But she tried. But she do be listening to Cafe. Yeah, because I told her about how raggedy she be looking. And she still was looking raggedy with that on. I was just saying at least she did try to put on the two-piece outfit okay but it was colorful as hell because i had to get my shades on i couldn't wear my glasses i said is that i had to put on my shades she was loud as hell family but anyway um she had to be put in time out and this is it right here y'all will see um y'all will see right here let me turn this one off Y'all see right here, you, I say, it says up there, Super Mayor Tiffany Henyard was timed out by Cafe and Knowledge for 86K seconds. Okay, so she did come in my chat and I had to time her out. Then it says, uh, then I wrote, Tiffany is butt hurt. Yep, and then I put at the bottom, Tiffany, since you have so much to say, please call in on my live on Saturday. Now, uh, she most likely won't call and she might call into the live but i was informed that she's having an easter egg hunt today from 12 to 3. what what and you know what that was her when she wrote us saying I love you and ain't nothing you could do about it because check this out here family because i want y'all to hear that that was her the one that and she and she finally admitted it was her, but I want y'all to see what I'm talking about. But um, she said, um, "What was that? Um, this right here." The, the dumb stuff. But thank you again. I love y'all, and ain't nothing you can do about it. And yeah, I even love the hateful. So thank you so much for just calling me and checking on me and making sure I'm okay. Yes, I am okay. I so y'all heard her. I love you. Yeah, I and love y'all. It ain't nothing you can do about it. And yeah, I even love the hateful. So, so you see, it got it. ain't nothing you can do about it. So that was her. I love y'all. It ain't nothing you can do about it. And yeah, I even love. Mhm. So it was her. It was her. So we do know that she loved being in the cafe of knowledge chat. She loved commenting in my comment section and all that. Uh, Tiffany is wondering how did I have her shaking in her boots 
when I put that extra FBI heat on her, she ain't understanding it. And that's how narcissists do. They want to stick around and watch the person that they feel not playing with them. They want to watch it. So that's why she's watching us like that. She's watching the channel, trying to see what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it, and what my next move is going to be. But you would never know what my next move would be, Tiffany. Never. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But just do know my stilettos are in the fight to get you up out that seat. Yes, because you don't deserve it. You don't deserve that seat. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. You really don't. Uh, her goons, Tiffany and her goons, are ticketing the people, family. They ticketing the people. They, If the people go to the city council meeting or the trustee board meeting and things like that, Tiffany is actually having her goons put tickets on their cars. So when they come out of the meeting, they have to pay a big old ticket. Or if they riding around town, they get pulled over and get an unnecessary ticket. So now she is trying to deter them from going to trustee board meetings by her goon, the Lacey head top black dog, giving out tickets to the citizens. And they locked the city hall on them the other day. They couldn't even get in. We talking about not only just the the employees can get in, but not the community. And that's the place that they have to go and pay their taxes and go pay their house tax or either they have to go pay a bill or renew their license or renew something. She closed that down and locked it. And had that flunky Freeman standing in the doorway with them old ladies asking, let us in so we could pay this. What you need? What you need? We ain't let nobody in because we've been having threats. Y'all ain't been having no threats. You mean to tell me as bad as Lacey Top Dog is, y'all been having threats and you can't open up the door? I thought the lap dogs was bad. I thought the goons was bad. So y'all had to lock it down. What? Y'all ain't bad no more? Because, see, y'all been writing tickets to the community. But y'all locked the city hall talking about y'all scared of other people that comes in from the outside, like the news media and things like that. Really? So these ladies was begging and they put it on their like Facebook, their social media, whatever. And they did it live and they were showing everybody that Tiffany has ordered the city hall to be locked where nobody in the community can go pay their bills or go apply for like another license. Like it might be. You know, they could go get the license renewed or they could do something. They can't take care of no business in that place because Tiffany's ordered it be shut down. And the lap dog Freeman said, oh, we've been getting threats. That's how come uh, we ain't letting nobody in. Why, he got a bag of food in his hand. He talking to the old ladies on the outside. It was about, what, four old ladies out there? And they kept saying, come on, Freeman, unlock the door. Unlock the door. I got things to pay. I got things to do. He would not. He said, nope. Uh, so another lady, she was like, I hand y'all what y'all need. One lady said she need kind of a house permit or a building permit or something. And the lady was like, I slide it through here. Come on now. Come on now. They treating these old ladies like that. They treating the whole community like that. I want to know where is the trustees? See, the trustees, y'all asked us to help. But you won't help to get your receipts and you won't help to get, you know, all that. Why didn't y'all help these ladies get in that building? Because y'all seen it. Why haven't y'all demand that city hall be unlocked. And if she didn't unlock it for y'all, the trustees, 
But it seems like employees is what it got up there. Employees only. Well, why is the employees in there when they're not serving any of the citizens? So they're going to get paid for doing nothing, like always. Because remember, Tiffany pays her so-called security 300 hours every two weeks. She says he works two, 300 hours every two weeks. Impossible. So that's what they're going to do to the employees in there that she like. She's going to say they worked and they didn't work. They went in there for eight, nine hours, but they kept the doors closed to the public and to the community and to the citizens. But she's going to have them get paid a good amount of money for doing nothing. Wow. So where's the trustees at? Trustees, I want to know where y'all at. I want to know why was them old ladies and the citizens of Dothan locked out of the city hall and y'all didn't say nothing. And we talk about no, oh, we were going to wait to April 1st to the next meeting. No, no, no. This ain't got to be about the meeting. Go up there and say, what? They got City Hall locked. And y'all go up there and try it. And y'all see, oh, well, it's open to the employees, but not to the citizens. This is wrong. And y'all was supposed to went to the nearest district attorney or somebody to get that opened up for those people. So what we ain't going to do, trustees, we ain't going to have y'all playing a two-side game. Y'all want everybody to be behind y'all to get receipts and to get documents, but y'all can't be behind the city when they need to get inside of a building. Now, that we ain't going to do. I like y'all, but I don't like y'all that well. I'm sorry. I don't like y'all that well. I will ride your bump up if I see that hall locked again and no trustee has came to help. That was wrong. Y'all know that thing was locked. Y'all know it was locked. The trustees. Not nobody say nothing. Them ladies was handed sheets through a crack up on the slide door and all that. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. Mm -mm. I really don't want to ride the trustees bumpers, but I could tell you right now to see our elder out there begging to get inside of a door. This is just here a couple of days now. They was literally begging to get inside. And her Tiffany lap dog, while they was begging, come on, Freeman. Open up the door. We just want to pay. I just need to pay a bill. And I need to just uh get a permit. What kind of permit y'all need? She said, well, I just know how to build a grant. Okay, well, stay right there. We'll slide one through the door. I, yeah, yeah. What the? What is going on? Unbelievable. 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 Now, listen to this lady here. I want y'all to listen to this lady here said about how Tiffany Lapdog, the chief, giving them tickets when they come to the trustee meeting. Okay? He, while they inside the trustee meeting, he putting tickets on their card. High price tickets too. And make them have to go and pay them tickets for being in the parking lot. Because, see, the mayor said she don't want no meetings there while she ain't there. So if trustees hold meetings anyway, the public comes, her lapdog Lacey, chief of police, Start ticketing everybody. Allegedly, that's what the lady said. Better let y'all hear it in a minute. Mm -hmm. 
let me let y'all hear what she said uh lacy been doing around here see this is this is this is totally totally and my thing is why isn't the trustee board telling the people y'all don't have to pay that see citizens Y'all all need to get together and go up there to the FBI thing. Now, we done got some of this stuff kicking and pumping for y'all, and we started talking on the internet for y'all. So all y'all got to do is take all those tickets and keep going to the FBI. Keep going to the FBI. Keep going to the Attorney General. Take all those tickets that they gave y'all and take it up there to the Attorney General's office. Take them up there to the FBI retaliation civil rights violation freedom of speech they're trying to shut you up anyway listen to this uh family this is that lady mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone thank you for coming out valerie stubbs again uh 22 year residence thank you board I'm tired of fighting, but I'm going to see this to the end, because there's no state statute nowhere to say that Valerie Stubbs can't clap, or you all, you all cannot clap. You will not, you will not shut me down. It's not being disrespectful. This is all about my First Amendment rights. Louis Lacey was out early this morning, stopping people, writing tickets, harassing the residents. Now y'all heard what she said. She said Lacey was out early this morning, writing tickets, harassing the residents, all that. That's the he and goons. That's a shame. That is a shame. Listen to her again. He was out early this morning harassing them. And this is the same lady that said she be hearing pow pows around her house to intimidate her from talking. Check it out. You are not shutting me down. It's not being disrespectful. This is all about my First Amendment rights. Liz Lacey was out early this morning, stopping people, writing tickets, harassing the residents. You know, I'm like Sam Watson, I be everywhere. And I'm looking and I'm watching and I got paid 30 years to watch. That's what I did. I watched. This is uh, the mayor's doing. You heard her say it was the mayor's doing. So that's how they treat them. That's how they treating them over there, family. Treating them real bad. Treating them real bad. Joe Grace, salute family. Leah, how you doing? Leah from overseas, J247. Salute, 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 salute. Yeah, salute, salute. Who at? I am what I am. Hey, salute. Yeah, salute, salute, salute. Who else I'm missing? I'm just going and going and going. But that's what this lady here said, family. That's what she said. That's wrong. That's wrong. And then listen to this one right here. This is, uh, I'm so tired of this backyard mud while in hand, Tiffany. I don't know what to do. Um, listen to this one. This is the trustee, one of the trustees pleading basically for our help. And I do have to say it was a gentleman at the trustee that said YouTubers got it on fire with helping us get this word out about how we are being treated down here. So we got to give shout outs to that young man. He did say that inside of their community meeting, a uh, trustee meeting. He gave all YouTubers who are on top of this thing props and i appreciate him doing that you know what i'm saying he made sure boy youtube have it on fire i've been seeing he said he strolls just to see and he you know he appreciated and things like that so salute to that gentleman now but this is one of the ladies on the trustee who is basically 
pleading for help as well. Um, here you go. It's a problem for all of us when we can't see where our tax dollars, when we can't see them and see how they're being spent. That's a problem. We got a big problem here. And definitely, you know, everybody's on social media, the news. Somebody has to step in. And as Brittany said, who's going to save us? Somebody has to save Dalton. Steady asking for our dollars, but you're not spending them the right way that it should be spent on this village. Again, somebody come in, the hashtag save Dalton. Y'all hear that, family? She says, somebody please come in. And they want people to say, hashtag save Dalton. If that ain't so heartbreaking to hear. Like I told y'all, it's 20,000 sisters and brothers and, you know, whites, black, well, all of them. 20,000 people there. Hurt. And this is how they run that city. You got a cop that is ticketing them if they come to those meetings. They are being harassed if they come to those meetings. They're being threatened when they go to those meetings or when they speak to news media or when they speak to the FBI. Because you clearly saw Tiffany start her little podcast and had Mr. Larry and Dr. Scott up there to humiliate them and do a goon call. Like, we don't know what a goon call is. Mm -hmm. And the sad part is, they say she throwing this Easter party today. Dalton, don't y'all fall for it. Town Hall, Thornton, don't y'all fall for it. See what Tiffany is doing. She threw this Easter bunny thing to show the public she ain't as bad as y'all think she is. See, that's what those type does. Mm -hmm. This is screaming corruption. And that's what most corrupt people do. They would do something corrupt and then try to do something that's uh, glamorous and pretty. Mm -hmm. Ace of people who do ace of behavior to people, they do that too. They do ace of behavior and then they try to treat the person so sweet and nice. Then they do ace of behavior, then they try to treat that person so sweet and nice. That's what Tiffany is doing right now with that Easter egg. While in mud hunt. That's all it is. Is them eggs in mud? That's what I want to know. Is Tiffany got them eggs, the Easter egg hunt? Is y'all kids running around in mud? Because that's all she giving. That's all she giving. I sure hope y'all Easter eggs ain't here in the mud. If if y'all want to know where the eggs at, go to the mud. That's where it's at. Mud while in here. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to know. The uh Stephanie, she said the meeting is April 1st. Yeah, it's supposed to be April 1st. But the thing about that is Tiffany has locked everything up. So we don't know if the board is going to be able to still have that April 1st. And they probably will find another spot to have their meeting at. But the thing is, when they have these meetings, she have her goon ticketed, put tickets on people's cars and stuff. Okay. Now, I've also heard that she said, Tiffany. If the meeting is crowded, we gonna close the meeting. What? She talking about if the meeting have too many people at, it, we gonna shut the meeting down. She just doing that for she 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 already setting up the play. She already setting up the play. She definitely don't want to be at that meeting. And I'm gonna tell you what she got planned. Most likely, allegedly, this is what she got planned, family. Okay. April 1st is when they're supposed to have the meeting. She's going to so-called be late. She's going to have her goons tell her how many people are at that meeting. Once they say the news people here, the such and such here, 
and it's some reporters here, and you got some citizens here. Shut it down. She ain't even gonna leave home because she don't want to answer no questions for real. She's gonna say, shut it down. Mm -hmm. She's gonna try to shut it down. So, see, that's why I say the trustees need to have people, they need to special request the attorney generals and people like that to uh, accompany them to these type meetings because this is off the chain. Now, trustees, we're going to need y'all to get those district attorneys because they are in there. Or the FBI, they are in there to assist y'all with those meetings. Y'all can get in those buildings. Somebody will be in a world of a trouble if y'all go get those two people and have them come and see why all these doors are locked and how come people can't go to an open meeting that's scheduled for the city and the citizens. I don't know, family. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let me see what's going on here. Need news to authorities. Uh-huh. Uh, Stephanie said, need news and auditors help. Yeah, and they say that they probably locked the doors to the city hall because auditors uh, might was coming in or something like that. Now, let me tell you, y'all already know. Knowledge family already know. For over 30 something years. That's what my business is. We do, I took we do art. I go in. We talked about how I used to go in and I look at stuff and I used to have to terminate people and things like that. Uh, but my thing is you do audits and inventory when the place is closed, okay? Uh, because that's that's my business, and that's what I did for some 30 some years. You do that when the business is closed. So say if your business is open between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. You do your auditing or your inventory after 5, either when it closes or everybody come in about three or four hours early before the business open and do your audit and your inventory there. You don't do audit and inventory in the middle of the day when the place is open. You don't audit anything when the place is open. Now, if you got an emergency audit where people just come and bum rush in there, they train to do that with people coming in or people going out. So that's no excuse. That building was closed to punish the citizens. And the trustees that's speaking up. Um, let me see. Um, so and let me get on this right here. Uh, let me see. Let me let me see if y'all got any questions, y'all. Rachel Max, salute, salute, family, salute. Salute. Who else I need to call out? Leslie Bean. Salute. 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 Zulu Black One. Salute. 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 Say hello, new subscriber. Why are the fans taking so long to put Tiffany and her goons in jail? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Kendall R laughing. I think Kendall R was laughing about them rotten eggs, them eggs in the mud. She got an Easter egg hunt from 12 to uh from 12 to 3 p.m. today. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it, Dalton. Dalton, whatever. Need the word out. Yes, yes, yes. She's a public official. It's not a private venue. Exactly, Paul Cousins. Exactly. That's what I can't understand. She's a public official. It's not a private thing. Like, that's a city hall. They say they have to pay bills and things there. And they said, what was it, Thursday and Friday or something? They could not get in there. They could not get in there. And, and they just shut it down. You know, unbelievable, unbelievable, um, unbelievable. 
Oh, thank you, real uh real eyes recognize real lies. Said I'm wearing that red. Thank you so much. Mike on a hike 1958. It's great that you have been assigned to bring light to the shenanigans going on by the hen. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, she I mean it's it's unbelievable. Leah, you Leah said you are doing such a great job at Kendall R. Kendall R does uh hearts up for Kendall R because she really does. She be handling that thing. She really does. Kendall R be handling. She be handling. She really do. And uh we we appreciate it. We appreciate it. We appreciate all of y'all. Um and another thing that I want to say because I'm gonna I'm gonna get more on Tiffany. I'm just waiting to see um the first they supposed to have they meeting i guess what monday um i'm just waiting to see if that meeting's gonna happen april 1st y'all already know i'm ready i got the bumper cars ready and loaded to get with tiffany i'm i'm telling you definitely 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 but um as y'all this is one more thing i wanted to say too is Nicki Minaj and her husband, Kenny Pettif, they are ordered to pay 500K. See? They ordered to pay 500K for messing up a security guard's mouth in Germany. And, um... <clears throat> It, that's it's real sad. It says Nikki and Kenneth Petty has been ordered to pay five hundred thousand default judgment stemming from an allegation physical, uh, you know, physical hits, whatever, of a security guard in Germany. And um, the person said that Kenneth Petty blindsided him and hit him in the jaw and then the jaw broke broke up in pieces and so he's had to have um he said that he had to have let me show you what okay i now i now have five plates this is him talking i now his name is uh wade wade and muller okay and in germany and what happened was they say that Nikki and another chick got into like a little argument, not a physical thing, just like a heated little argument. That security guard, Wade and Muller, came over, this was in Germany, came over to tell this woman to stop and tell Nikki Minaj to stop. But Kenneth Petty, what was Kenneth Petty doing over there in Germany anyway? Because I thought he was a tricycle chaser. I thought he wasn't even supposed to be uh, out of the country and all that stuff without getting permission. And I didn't hear him say nothing about he had permission. I, just, I would like to know that. But anyway, this man here went over there and um, he tried to stop both of them from arguing. And Kenneth felt like you could say something to her, but not my wife. And so the man was like, man, later for that and walked off. And he said he got blindsided. And Kenneth must have hit him real hard to, you know, mess up the jaw part. And now the man said that he now has five plates in his jaw. And my jaw is not yet been fully reconstructed. The doctor must still insert implants into my jaw as a part of the reconstruction process. And uh, the doctor had to get bones from a donor for his mouth to have future space for future surgeries and implant. So he was originally asking for seven hundred thousand dollars plus twenty one thousand dollars medical expenses but the judge said uh, i'm only going to give award you five hundred thousand dollars and five hundred 
thousand and three dollars, three hundred and eighteen dollars. Okay, so that's what the judge rewarded him five hundred k for that incident. So Nicki Minaj and Kenny Petty have to pay that man five hundred k uh, on the fly. And the thing is, is that. Nikki and Kenneth never would answer this lawsuit. They kept ignoring it when the, they say when the sheriff would come to their residence in Calabasas uh, and all that. They wasn't, they was trying to ignore it. So then they put it in newspapers telling them, hey, just because you're not answering don't mean you're not going to be obligated. You need to respond to this. You need to show up to this court hearing. You need to, they kept ignoring it or they didn't get it or they was acting like they didn't see it or whatever. And when they got time to go to court, they wasn't there, none of that. So by default, the judge granted that man his 500K. Mm -hmm. So while Hunt and Petty was trying to be slick, it didn't work out too well. Uh, So, uh, that's it on that. Uh, Zulu Black One. Oh, he said that was a. Oh, that was Kenneth Petty and um, um, Nicki Minaj. Zulu. Sabrina Marshall. Salute. 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 Yes. So uh, that's that's that one on that one. And let's just, uh, I just want to tell everybody, y'all going to be able to call in in a minute. I just want to kind of rush through this a little bit right quick. But um, y'all already know we talked about Shanquilla and I. we gave her her justice. Uh, I just want to give shouts out to the Knowledge family, um, the Knowledge team, everybody for working hard until we got Shanquilla her justice. Now we're just waiting on her family to do their part, okay? They have all the tools. They know about the tools, all that. We're just waiting on them, okay? But one thing I can say, and we could talk about it a little bit, you know, more when the lines open or whatever, but one thing I could say is it's giving entitlement. See, that's why I named that title like that, because everybody I talked about seemed like they got some entitlement going on. That's just like Nicki Minaj and Petty. They did not attend that courtroom. Entitlement just felt like we ain't got to go to that. We ain't going to, you know, ain't nothing going to be done, I guess, because the guy they did it to was in Germany. It happened in Germany and they thought wasn't nothing going to happen here. Yes. Yes entitlement you know so that's what it's given to me in Shanquilla's thing it's, it's given the family is feeling like entitlement like the, the behavior is y'all can stomp and push and fight for us but when we got what we want Damn, yeah, that's what it's giving. I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? Y'all done gave us four hundred thousand dollars. We done, that's what it's giving. We done, y'all done gave us four hundred thousand dollars. We don't owe y'all no explanation. That's what it's giving. Entitlement, entitlement. Y'all done gave us all y'all dedication and support, non-stop fight uh, all over the place. We good. Don't say thank you. Don't say appreciate it. Don't say thank you for the 400,000. Nothing. That 400K, nothing. It's given in title. So then I have to wonder too, what was Shanquilla really dealing with. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And the Ella situation. The update on Ella, 
so I could get the phone calls uh, in. But the update on Ella Goody. Y'all know that Ella, two years ago, was a, a Lyft, a ride, independent Lyft driver. And Brandon Francisco asked her, she's in Louisiana, asked her to take him to Texas. She agreed to take this passenger to Texas, and she was never seen again, okay? Um, but they found her car with him in Missouri, okay? A couple of weeks later, her car is found in Missouri. He was found in Missouri. It was a lot of evidence in the car blood evidence and things like that, that the detectives and everybody came to the ruling of she's not here, deletion, okay? Uh, her phone last stopped pinging in the area of Louisiana, okay? In the Kukushu area, whatever, that you know how they are. But we're going to talk. I could show y'all more about that. But when she got in the car with him, well, when he got in her car for the ride share. And a lot of people say, well, is she from Louisiana? Why would she take him to Texas? Well, that's just like two, three hours away, about three hours away. It depends. And that's some good money, you know, and she probably make those type of trips all the time. Um, but there's some good money, you know. But the thing is, is that when he got in her car, her phone stopped pinging probably about five or six miles away from where he got in at, and then she was never seen again. And they saw her car on traffic cam coming back in from Texas, but going up towards Missouri. But they really can't say it was her. I think it was him driving her car, of course, because her, pings, her phone stopped pinging like 12 hours before they caught her car on traffic cam, okay? But the moral of the story is, family, they haven't never found a body or anything like that. But they found her car in Missouri with Brandon Francisco. Okay? And he was already wanted for attempted deletion. So when they called his name in up there in Missouri, it automatically alerted Louisiana that, hey, he on the run. He supposed to be in court here, and he's not. Hold him, and we're going to come get him and bring him back to Louisiana. They say, okay. Then a couple of days after that, they find this car uh, just parked somewhere, and they come, they run the light plates in, and it was Ella. Her family reported her missing, and Brandon was the last one with her. So he was in Missouri and her car was in Missouri. They said when they did the forensics tests on it, it was a lot of blood that they can most likely uh, determine homicide. And they say some witness statements, they ruled it a deletion. Okay. Now, family, uh, everybody know that um, y'all heard me talking to her mother and her godmother, okay? And I also have been talking to Ella's kid's guardian. To remind you, since she's deleted now, she had to get guardians over her that's in the family. Her mother couldn't do it because her mother's in a wheelchair and really can't move and stuff. Ella was basically her mother's help, okay? And so the mother couldn't take the kids, so the kids are with guardians, okay? And they were two separate guardians, okay? So her kids had to get split up, but they were two separate guardians. So that's when CAFE was pushing for her kids to be able to get, because her mother was saying um, they really can't get any state help or anything like that. For the kids, okay, because Ella is not here and things like that. So we helped the family and we helped the guardians, okay. And so now, uh, Ella, 
and along with the DA, because, you know, we talked to the DA as well, Amber, got it to where her kids are straight for is like whatever they could be eligible for, for the state, that they won't be missing the beat that comes with um, any type of counseling, any any type of um, state help that the guardian may need with these kids, extra funds and college, future college funds and things where they don't have to suffer because of what Brandon Francisco did to their mom. Okay. And at the time before we had stepped in it, the kids wasn't getting that type of benefit. Well, now I can update. They are getting those benefits. So um, we, we, they, they, they keep saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But um, this is what we do. And I'm just so happy that once again, we can move on and, we know that the kids will be straight, okay? And with the state and with a lot of different benefits and things like that. Now, for as Brandon being held accountable for Ella's demise, we was pushing for that as well. But then we had to give the family a little bit more time. Because you have some parts of her immediate family that are still haven't came to grips that Ella is gone. And then you have some sides of the immediate family have come to grips with it. But the thing is, family, um, the police have deletion on the paperwork, right? It's a, it's a deletion. OK, and they did that based on the forensics and things like that, that they found. Well, the family is still saying she just missing. She just missing. She's still out there. She just missing. She just have to come home. She's just probably hurt somewhere. She has to come home. She just missing. So. Bringing Francisco into court right now really wouldn't my opinion, and some other professional opinion wouldn't be a great idea because they need to family to stand on their side by side with them and say, he took my niece or my daughter or my cousin or whatever. He is the cause of her demise. But if you say she just missing. We just want her to know we love her. She's just missing somewhere. That wouldn't be a good, solid case to put her demise on to Brandon. Because Brandon lawyers will say, see, they even say she's still here. Why is y'all hassling my client? Why is y'all have? Yeah, he was last seen with her, but he didn't do nothing with her. Even they said... Uh, she's still here. So it became a catch-22. And it became to where we then said, we have to give the family time to accept when, it could take years. It could take years for a family to accept that their loved one is gone. And when they get to that point, then they can call CAFE and her team back. And we'll pick that up just like we helped with Ella's kids get the best of the best that they need for their counseling and their growing. Okay. So, but I just want y'all to see what I'm talking about because they just did a two year anniversary. Thank you. BGM, thank you so much, BGM. Thank you so much for the donation. Shouts out. Your generosity is so greatly appreciated. 
Thank you so much, BGM. Thank you so much for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Loves to you, loves to you, loves to all of y'all. Um, but this is this is what I wanted y'all to see, family. Um, it 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 hurt it. Um, that. The main key players, yeah, y'all, y'all heard her mom. Remember when um I let y'all listen to uh her mother? Me and her mother was talking on an interview, and her mother said, I don't like nobody saying my condolences because I feel like she's still here. A mother knows, a mother knows. She just don't want to accept what the detectives documents have the evidence, the witnesses, and things like that. And it takes time, you know. Uh, But I did still, I didn't just leave it there. I still said, I want to get these kids help. And I want to make sure they get the best of the best that they need to carry them for is counseling, for education, in case they want to go to college and things like that. And we was able to make some connections with the guardians and Ella kids are in two separate States. Okay. She had two. One is being taken care of in Louisiana. One is being taken care of in Texas. Okay. Um, So we had to make sure that both States make sure that these kids get the proper, any type of resources that's available for kids that's in situations like this, okay? And we was successfully, we done that, okay? So that was the main priority as well. Um, But we have to give the family time with the Francisco thing. And so I'm going to tell y'all about, uh, show y'all this right here because this was about a couple of weeks ago, family, uh, Ella's anniversary, right? And her immediate family got on the news. And this is what they say. Hold on, family. Hold on, family. Okay, right here. I want y'all to see how the news even start. Now, this is Ella for the ones who haven't never seen Ella before, but this is Ella and Francisco. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Um, and that's the guy who deleted her. Uh, but you will see also here, family, you'll see on here, it says March the 11th. What do this say right here? Where is Ella Goody, Scott? Women missing for two years. Key word, family. Woman missing. Not woman deleted. Not woman, you know, deleted by this person. She's missing. It's hard to fight that in court. It's hard, it will be hard to get this man to be held accountable for deleting her when the family still hasn't quite accepted she's gone. How long that would take, we don't know. Okay, but we do know he's still in prison, though, for attempted deletion on someone else from for a man. So he's in prison now. We just wanted to attach Eller's demise to him. But right now, that wouldn't be a great idea. Okay. Um, And, you know, from the evidence that the detective have, and, you know, we've been looking into that. It was a massive amount of blood. Hers. In that car that he was in, and he was driving all the way to Missouri. And, but it was enough of that in the car to say no one would have been able to survive with 
that amount. That amount in there. Mm-mm. It's no way. You know, then they had some witnesses. Okay. Uh, but you need, like I tell everybody, you need the family to push. And if the family is not pushing for that, then you have to kind of, that's what we're saying by Shanquilla. We gave them what they needed. We just need for them to push it. But that's something a family has to do. You know, um, but listen to this right here, because that was the article. And then you had her family was talking. And I want y'all to hear what they said. And I want y'all to listen very carefully. Y'all know how the knowledge team do. Y'all, y'all know how the knowledge family. Y'all know how the knowledge family do. Listen very, very carefully. And tell me what y'all hear. Okay? Listen. It can move up every day. This is just a couple of weeks ago. It's been two years since anyone has seen or heard from Ella Goody. The Scott woman's disappearance is being investigated as a homicide. Went missing after she reportedly gave Brandon Francisco a ride from Louisiana to Texas. Kate Beale. Ella Goody is our trace, only sister. That's her brother family. She was 33 years old when she was last heard from on March 9th, 2022. She was driving to Texas and back along I-10, giving a ride to Brandon Jermaine Francisco. Her car was spotted the next day north of Dallas. Anybody who does something or did something, you are heartless. You are heartless. On March 16th, 2022, Scott Police asked for the public's assistance, and Francisco was named a person of interest. A week later, Francisco was arrested in St. Joseph, Missouri, on unrelated charges out of Rapids Parish, on which he pleaded guilty to attempted second-degree murder. April 1st, Goody's car was found in St. Joseph, Missouri. Law enforcement searched an area of the interstate near the Kemp Shoot Jeff Davis Parish line the last known location of her cell phone. Goody's family says they've been on foot looking, too. We went on searches by ourselves, just like four of us, like Texas, everywhere, like they chose. Searching everything. Searching just us girls. By May, state police announced Goody's case was being investigated as a homicide. Nearly a year after she disappeared, her case was handed over to the Calcasieu Parish District Attorney. She has two kids that's missing their mother. Their mother. I don't understand how somebody could be so cruel or so evil to take someone and do something to them. And now they're missing for two years. With each day that passes, her family fights for answers. I don't care what post you see. Keep sharing. I don't care what state you're in. Because a lot of people don't know about the case. A lot of people don't know who's Ella. But if you see it, please keep sharing. Please. Ella Goody. We love you, and we miss you. But Francisco remains the only person of interest. Okay, family. So y'all see that um, that hurts. That hurts. Like I told y'all, I've been doing this for 30 something years and every one of them I takes to heart. And once we have done our 110%, it's nothing. And I'm telling te- I had Brandon in the palm of my hand. And as y'all know, y'all heard me talking to Amber, the DA, who's over Ella's case. 
And I've talked to her a couple of times afterwards. And Amber was ready to get out with Brandon Francisco. She was a big part of just communicating with me to get the kids everything they need for the Texas Guardians and the Louisiana Guardians so that the kids would be straight. But one thing can't nobody do is push the family to be ready to accept that Ella is no longer here. That has to come with time. And as you hear on there, she's like, hey, share her pictures, share. I mean, it's literally that, hey, if y'all see her, just please tell her where. And, and y'all going to hear that boom, boom. You, you, you see what I'm talking about, about people in them cars. You just can't tell your folks nothing. You know what I'm saying? We know you here. Why you got to have all that boom, boom? That's another. That, it's no need to vibrate every window in the neighborhood to let people know you here. Listen to that shit. Lucky I'm on my live. But anyway, uh, that's some of the team too. That's some of the team. Yeah. Uh-huh. But anyway, uh, I just want y'all to know that you can't push a family to um, be ready to accept something like that. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just can't. Uh, so we just, we just have to wait till they feel like they are ready to um, accept it. Cause y'all heard it on there, you know. Her brother even said, you know, we just wanted to come home. She'll give you the shirt off her back. So you just have to give them time, um, and that could take years. Uh, you just don't know. But as long as we know her kids are straight, you know. Uh, let me see what y'all have to say. Um, you are right, Cafe. That's Ernie Williams. Yes. Uh, yes, you know, it's like, um, it is, Leah. Leah said it is hard to accept a terrible loss. And it is. It is, you know, um, it, it it really is, you know, it's hard to accept a terrible loss. Uh, but when we know that kids are involved, um, sometimes we have to do what we can to make sure that we can help them along that. You know, because um, that's a parent. Rather, rather, Ella would have been the father or the mother. Kids need that healing for either or that's missing at a young age like that. You know, uh, so it does. It does take time uh, to heal. Uh, but when their kids are involved. We need to sometimes do the best, best, best we can do um, for the kids, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, my brother Sabian. I'm just as heartbroken with Sabian. Um, everybody know I just did Sabian's um, duel story here last thing and uh, about he was in the backyard beard and um i'm just not feeling that story and and let me tell y'all his update on that right there and we did go over his story about him it was some people remodeling the house 
and they had been remodeling the house for weeks. And then they go out to the backyard to see what else they need to do around the backyard or whatever. And they see a foot come out the ground and it looks like a person. And it was a person. It was Mr. Sabian. Somebody had buried him back there in that yard. Okay. Um, and the homeowners say they don't know him. They don't know how he got there. The, the workers who was working on the house who found him say they don't know Sabian either. They just was shocked to see him back there like that, you know, whatever. Okay, now this is his update. This is our brother Sabian. Okay. That's our brother Sabian. Okay. Um They say, this is his update. The report says that Sabian Duell had been Baker Act once before, but never diagnosed with a illness, okay? Mental illness. The Florida Baker Act law allows doctors and health professions and judge and law enforcement to commit a person to this, uh, you know, uh, mental health treatment center for up to 72 hours if they display certain violent behavior or if they act like they will endanger themselves because it's a sign of illness upstairs, okay? The report also said that he's never been missing before. Okay, now stop, 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 stop the press. Now they want to say Sabian was inside of a Baker facility before, okay? Baker facility means, like it just said, that he has a history of went into this illness, head illness, you know, mental um, place before for 72 hours, okay? Um, he came out of it in 72 hours, whatever, okay? But my thing is, what do that has to do with him being in that backyard like that? He didn't put himself back there. He didn't put himself back there. I don't care what type of Baker Act he went to, Florida Baker Act. That means that a law enforcement or a judge can ask for you to be in this facility for 72 hours if they think you are violent or will be violent to yourself, okay? My thing is, this right here ain't got nothing to do with that. He didn't put himself back there. And then if you say, oh, well, somebody could hurt themselves. Okay, if this was a whole nother situation, if they had a found Sabian on the couch or in the bed or something like that, something like that. No, he was found that they buried. He didn't do that himself. So why did that even come up? And, you know, that's the update. Then they say, here, family. They said uh, the expert, Carson, explained that the reports can be used, can be useful. That's the autopsy. They waiting on the autopsy so that they can see exactly what happened to our brother Sabian. Well, you know what? I'm not too enthused with a lot of these right here because Shankula's was off undetermined. Um, Alicia Watts undetermined. Do y'all think Sabian's going to come back under term? I'm just not feeling this. I'm not feeling this. Uh, but anyway, they said they're waiting on the autopsy report to come back. So he said the autopsy report would tell us where they were before they were missing, who they was with, said Carson. At this point, we don't even know that it's a deletion.
at this point, we don't even know if it was a deletion. That's what they say. At this point, we don't even know if this was a deletion. I meant it could simply be someone. She did just try to change it up. He said, I meant it could simply be someone hiding a body. Someone passed and they didn't want to be connected to it. So he going to give us a theory. He going to give us a theory. He going to tell us they going to wait on the autopsy to see who he was with, where he was, and all this stuff. They said they going to wait on the autopsy to do that. But he still going to give us his stinking ass theory which is stinks the high sky. Don't come trying to tell us that, oh, it might not have been a deletion. It might have just been somebody just wanted to hide a body because they didn't want to be involved. Well, anybody who do that is involved. See, Detective Carson. Detective Carson, C-A-R-S-O-N. See, let me tell you something, Mr. Carson. We didn't ask for your damn opinion anyway, first of all, okay? Only thing you had to do was say we waiting on the autopsy to see what was going to happen. But see, you trying to lead us to a whole nother theory, which we don't want to hear your theory. We really don't. We don't want to hear nothing that you got to say because everything you're saying stinks to high sky and sounds like you ain't got too much of uh, experiencing this here thing either, okay? Because clearly, you say, I mean, it could be simply someone hiding a body, but he don't really say body. This is what he really says, family. We see right there, third row from the bottom. Okay. Okay, so um, you say it could be someone just hiding a body and didn't want to be involved. Well, the people that we know that's not involved in stuff, if they walk up and see a body, they're going to call. Hey, 911, hey, I just ran across a... That's what the people that work at the place did. They called 911. They didn't say, oh, well, I ain't going to say nothing because I don't want to be involved in it. What? Whoever put it back there, put it back there because they did something to him. I can't see nobody saying, oh, wow, I just ran across the body. Let me go over here and bury this body because, uh, but I ain't going to call nobody because I don't want to be involved in this body here. I'm finna bury and take about two hours to dig up, dig me a hole and put him in there. What? So you really think we that stupid? Awesome. Purple suspect. Purple sex said and the detective sounds suspect. Yeah, or I'm wondering because see, this was a prestige type neighborhood. You know, one of those Malibu neighborhoods, okay? Uh, down there in Florida, one of them little prestigious neighborhoods, right? So I'm wondering, did the homeowner know the detective? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice area. And see, the homeowner then says, behind this here man say, oh, it was squatters used to be at my house before I started remodeling it. Where them damn squatters at, huh? Show us where the squatters, show us the pictures of the squatters. That's what we want to see. Talking about, and it was some people that rented my house before that. What's their name? What is their name? We need, you said some people rented the house before you started remodeling it. Then you said after the people who was renting your house left, you had squatters.
And then after the squatters, he remodeling the house now. Because he wants to sell the house. Why you want to sell the house now? See, you was renting it out all this time. And then you had squatters in it. Then you remodel. I can see you remodeling it and stuff. Why you want to sell it? Is it some type of memory there? Or was it because you already knew that the body was back there? Now you don't want to stay there. You don't want to have no dealing with it. You want to sell it to a new owner. And then a new owner gets stuck with that in the backyard, Mr. Sabian. They done bought this house from you and all that. You gone, took the money. Now that's their new home. Then they go out there to do something and find Mr. Saving. Well, now the bag on them. Not on you no more. This thing stinks to high sky. Then, family, uh, as you know, um, it has here the homeowner on sunny sunny acres drive that's it family sunny acres drive this is a pretty nice little area has he said that his house been under uh remodeling for three weeks the homeowner told the news that there was renters before he remodeled and squatters shortly after Family members did not want to talk on camera in case there is a possible suspect still out there. This thing stinks the high sky, family. This thing stinks the high sky. They say the family members don't want to talk in case it's possible suspects out there. Well, yeah, you already know possible suspect out there. What family say we don't want to talk because it might be possible suspects out here. So we don't want to say nothing about our family member. Well, I'm going to tell you what happened, family. I got to digging on Mr. Sabian, me and my team, okay? Because we didn't like none of this here we seeing. And uh, it shows that Mr. Sabian was living in a house with about 60 other people are using that same address. It was given something like a border home or some type of home that a lot of people stay at in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Everybody's using that particular resident for their address. Nobody's related. You got a couple of people with the same last name. And, but every, it's, it's like, it's like, I say about 20 different last names up under the same house, but they all, Right now, it's staying in that house. Um, and Sabian Duell is the only one that has that last name, Duell. But he his home address is listed to this address. But he's the only Duell in there. There's no Duells coming up for Sabian. It doesn't even show a relative for Sabian. So these people who was talking that say they his family, um, in my opinion, that is not his family. Because um, we did our search. Y'all know how the knowledge team do. And Sabian is not coming up as have family members there not a mother not a father not an auntie nobody is coming up under do well and i can see that for the women because women last names get changed but for the man nobody 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 his listings have associates. All the associates are the same people in this home. But it's not given immediate family members. So that's when it lets me know, was he um, probably in a home when he was younger? And then, you know, at the age 18, you own your own and you start your own life and you start doing your own thing. Cause they say he had kids and things like that, had two kids or something. Um, 
but he's given what Dejanae Jackson gave. Uh, yeah, I know when we went into her background, is giving foster care. And that's what it looked at like with Saban. So I'm wondering, um, was that house something that like, you know, uh, you got a room here, a room there, a room there. You know, like I, I can't pay for a full blown apartment on my own. So um, I'm going I'm going, you know, go in half with a couple of these people. Probably got a boarding house with six rooms or rent out or something like that. And you pay about forty dollars, fifty dollars a month or one hundred dollars a month for your room. That's what is giving family. But regardless. They're not going to act like Sabian is trash. No, they're not. No, they're not. Um, we will keep our eyes on this story, and we are digging in this story. But it stinks to high sky. And the ones who said his family member said they don't want to be on camera just in case the suspects are out there. Well, according to my research, y'all ain't family. So who are y'all for real? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. We're going to find that. Anyway, uh, that's what I wanted to tell y'all about our brother Saban. Um, I'm going to show y'all more of that research. You know what I'm saying? That we did. But nah, it's it's about 56, I would say 60 people that have been using that same address. Everybody got different last names, everything. You might find one or two with the same last name, but everybody else got a different name, a whole bunch of Harris's and a whole bunch of this and all that. Mm -hmm. And only one do well. Save it. So, uh, you know, that's all I have to say about that. Um, anybody want to call in? The lines are now open. Um, the phone number is 678-439-4517. Yes, 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 yes. Um, take me some calls for about 35, 40 minutes. See what the knowledge family has to say. Uh, the lines are now open. It looked like somebody tried to call me about 11 minutes ago. Uh, what's, uh, let me see. Let me see the area code. But anyway, yes, y'all call in. Let me see um, who all I have. Uh, Sabrina Marshall said, Cafe, I agree. You and your team did an amazing job to help her children. Thank you, Purple Sacks. Yes, we really did. Ernie Williams said, thank God for you, Sister Cafe, and your family and team. Thank you so much. Thank you to y'all, too. Um Barbara Luwandowski, salute family, salute, salute, salute. Uh, um, Susie Sensation said, where in the hell did these detectives and autopsy workers get their <laughs> degree? It's something else, you know what I'm saying? Did the property owner did it? Sabrina Marshall, I, you know, I don't know, but it's very, very suspect. Very, very suspect. Yes. Um, yes, the line is thank you, Kendall R. Thank you, thank you, Kendall R. Be holding it down. And thank y'all all so much for the uh, support. Thanks again. A special thank you to BGM. Thank you so much for your donation, your generous donation. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Um, the telephone number is 678. 
uh, let me see, um, 510. I don't know what, um, five, let me see, five, 10. Okay. But yeah, so, um, somebody was calling from Oakland. I don't know who that is. But anyway, uh, Rachel Mack, that was just around when the law started interfering with parents' rights and disciplines of children. Oh, yeah, she she must she must be at the point where uh yeah, she must be at the point. She must be at the point where we was talking about Diddy and them. But I hope that T.S. will be calling. Leah said, I hope that T.S. will be calling. Uh, foster care times out almost like, yeah, yeah, T.S., it was almost like a halfway. It seems like it, you know. Um, um, yes, uh-huh. Yes. Um but yeah. So um okay. That's T S. Hey, what's on your mind today? Hey Cafe. How you, you look doing? Gorgeous as usual. Thank you. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you so much. How you doing? I'm doing outstanding and and yourself. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I, I got kind of a little emotional talking about um Ellis 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 I know. Ellis case. I that. Yeah, yeah. Just, um that's 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 something else, but you took care of it. You do your you do your due diligence and mm -hmm. that's all you can do, Cap. Right. You, you do an outstanding job, you do all of the research you can. And that's all anybody can ask, you know. Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. a hell of a lot more than most of the people even care about. Mm -hmm. You know, some yeah, people yeah. say, oh, we got your back. Oh, we family. We this, we that. And when the soup turn to gravy and you turn around, ain't a soul there. Right. So I want to thank you You're right. You're right. for standing in the gap for all of these people that don't have anybody else to stand in the gap for mm -hmm. and thank and thank y'all thank you thank you and thank the knowledge family as well because y'all support is really uh amazing and keeps uh -huh. me motivated with it you know uh -huh. yes uh -huh. mm -hmm. well i sure do appreciate you as well and I know you've done an outstanding job on each and every one of these people that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's no surprise to us that your blessings will continue time after time. No, oh, thank you. It's outstanding. Thank you. And uh, as far as taking care of uh, any future cases, we're going to be standing right here with you. Thank you. We're not going anywhere. Thank so I want to so thank much. you for all you do, Cafe. You really do thank deserve you. all the blessings that heaven has to offer. You put in the work and you put it in 110 to 200 percent. Mm -hmm. So I'll let somebody else call in. But uh, uh, I okay, but wait a minute. So wait, but, but wait a minute before you go. What, what, what do you think about that? Boy, it sounds like a boarding house. I see you say halfway, and that's what yeah, they kind of sound like a halfway house. You know, the uh, I used to work with those young people, some of them that were in foster care, and they would time out. And sometimes when they would time out, we would help them get in college or we help them get a trade. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they help them move into homes like halfway homes, like you say, and then they pay a certain amount, they right? Work okay, for somebody. Yeah, they might work for somebody mm -hmm. and then pay fifty dollars a week for their room or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, like you said, okay, possible. so yeah, so it did because I did see you say that halfway house, and I was saying, yeah, I think that's exactly what I was saying because uh -huh. 
Uh -huh. Yeah, because it, uh -huh. it, that's what it sounds like. What you yeah. say? That's what it's given. <laughs> that's what it's given. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's given. So yeah, I think you had got your finger on the pulse of what's going on in our communities. And I also want to say it's really kind of sad that we don't have more people investing in in our people, whether they're young or old. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. older, it, we ought to have more people investing in what's going on in our communities. Like you was talking about the people at the uh, municipal building in Dalton. Right. Those seniors shouldn't have to stand out there and beg for anything. Mm -hmm. They put in work years ago. Mm -hmm. And we just have such a level of disrespect and disregard in our community. It's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, so, and, and, and I do, and, and, and you know what I, I love to is that there's a lot of OGs on, like I said, like a lot of OGs like you yourself who are voicing uh -huh. um, things and me. Uh -huh. And it's a lot of OG males on there. And then we have Ernie Williams who, who would talk, you uh -huh. know, and be in the chat and things uh -huh. like that. That helps uh -huh. out a lot because you do uh -huh. see the younger generation, some of them that has YouTube platforms, when they see Rome, oh, they go in. Mm -hmm. They go in on what they see that's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's their generation that kind of listens to them. They listen to us too, but mm -hmm. but they really are listening to the generation that's saying, "Hey, mm -hmm. this wrong, this stink. We don't mm -hmm. like this." He and and mm -hmm. it's and, and it's making it to where they are demanding some respect, more respect mm -hmm. in our. Uh, communities mm -hmm. and not just uh, black all over you know we demanding mm -hmm. that respect you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's what I love too so our voice make a difference now they not gonna say I listen to cafe and I listen to no but I do hear some things that they mm -hmm. say that I know I said it you see what I'm mm -hmm. saying and my thing is okay right. As long as they um, got it and they using it in the right way, mm -hmm. I'm cool with it. You know right, what I'm right. saying? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm cool with it. It just lets me know that they agree and they appreciate it and they do talk about different things, you know? And I'm just glad we all on the same page. Like you said, the disrespect of those old ladies out there That's terrible. was unbelievable. You know, it was. And you know what, Cafe? Mm -hmm. I remember back in the day when we was coming through, if somebody saw you disrespecting the elder. Oh, yeah, it was over with. They get with your ass. It was over with. Yeah, it, it was it, it was over with, you know. Yeah. But it, mm -hmm. it was. It was over with. But it's like nowadays they had taken away a lot of punishments that you can and cannot do uh, to kids and things like that. And um, the disrespect, it's a lot of them that still respect us because I've seen uh -huh. it, but uh -huh. then uh -huh. you have a uh -huh. lot like that flunky that was locked them out, you know, he doing that because uh -huh. he getting paid, he getting paid by a so-called mob boss, you know, so uh -huh. it's just, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable, but it is. But we holding the line, Kevin. Oh, yeah, gonna keep holding that dang going. Okay, okay, that's what okay. we gonna do. It. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. you, and I appreciate everybody in the chat. I don't always get a chance to, you know, acknowledge everybody, but I'm paying attention. I'm looking, I'm not LD, right? All the brothers in your chat, I seen more brothers in your chat today than any other chat that I've been online looking at. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I'm really so glad. Brothers. Huh? I'm so glad because I did see our brothers yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah, I respect and that. I got mad love for the brothers because a lot yes. of them stand in the gap, like you said, keep these young kids on point too. They, they might do. not get acknowledgement. They but do. I see them and I appreciate them. They do, you know, and mm -hmm. and I love it. And I love to see the men in the chat and engaging uh -huh. with us women and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. uh, it's like I said, it, even with that uh, situation going on in Dolphin, you hear uh -huh. more of the women 
Uh -huh. And you don't hear that much of the men. Now, when those women was locked out of that office, it should have been about 15, 20 men show up. You ain't lying. You know, the like, hey, man, why y'all got this? Women. You know, why y'all got this locked, whatever, and then go to like the, you know, go somewhere to make, you know, like, like I said, the district attorney office or somewhere like that and make them open up because you can't close no uh, public official office down like that where people no, have to pay can't. bills you, you know can't. Mm -mm. you can't do it mm -hmm. and, and for those that's in the chat you know because some people don't know what they young know some people i mean we don't know everything but we do know that when something is going around the city where those uh mayors or officials mm -hmm. or even if it's a uh just something basic you right. can always go and make a report at the attorney general's office. They're right. going to investigate and if they find any right. ill will, they're going to hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what the attorney general's office is for. That's what it's for. So, and and they always there. And like I said, even if the attorney general don't go down there themselves, they're going to send some of their deputies uh -huh. or somebody uh -huh. to go down there and handle that. You know? Uh -huh. So you're you right. Uh -huh. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yep. I thank you, sister. Keep doing what you're thank doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, thank and God you so bless much. you. And God bless the uh, Cafe and Knowledge team. You. I have a wonderful weekend. And you too. You too. All thank right. You. And we sending love right. right back to you, sis. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Love you, God. Okay. Ciao. All right. Bye. -bye. Okay. Ciao. And yes, and I do want to give a special thanks to all the brothers that, you know, all the men, all the men, all men who's in the chat, um, you are so greatly, y'all are so greatly appreciated. Um, y'all give us a sense of security when we see y'all in the chat, you know? Um, thank you. Thank you to the men that be in the chat. Um, talking with us and giving y'all opinion as well uh on matters and facts in the chat and we just appreciate it we just appreciate it because we get all point of views from all directions but we just want to tell y'all thank you thank you thank you and and we already know that the men in this chat makes a difference wherever they are they makes a difference you already know they do oh uh, and we want to tell y'all thank you for that thank you for that you know um i know that they probably making a difference with their families with people on the outside of their families they're making a difference i already know i can feel it wherever they are rather overseas in the united states they're making a difference you know so just want to tell all the men Thank you. Thank you. Especially, and even the men who are viewing, the ones who, like I said at the beginning, the ones who did everything they could to be me, they men, real men, they are not tainted or anything like that. They go is to be men, to work, strive, you know, help their family, help the kids and things like that. They hold, they on a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? And they care about the people in all communities. You know, that's what we love, you know? And then you have those men that are tainted. And sometimes it comes to where um, you have to pay dues on things that you are tainted with. You know, and sometimes you have to be held accountable for that. And it's a lot of accountability needs to be held, you know, on the tainted side. So I um, think that's all that I have to say. I just put some hearts up for the men in the chat, please. Hearts up, hearts up. I'm going to put some up as well. Hearts up for the men in the chat, for the men in the chat. Okay. Um. So that was that was it, family. We'll do another because I know people have a lot to do. This is uh this is that Easter Sunday, and I know a lot of people are have a lot to do. So we're gonna 
stop it right here. Thank you, TS, for calling in. Um, we'll do another one. I'm, I'm really trying to see about this April 1st meeting that they're supposed to have over there in Dalton. So we'll keep an eye on that, too. And I got a lot to share with y'all, too, on different other things. But I'm also going to keep our brother Sabian in mind and in prayers, uh, his situation, because something needs to come of that. Oh, Louis Goss Jr. He uh, passed heart, uh, hearts and prayer hands up for uh, Gossett Jr. Um let me put some prayer hands up for him as well. Uh, brother was a great contribute to all communities as well in the black community. So I just want to tell you all, thank you all. Love y'all. Have a great Easter holiday weekend. For those who don't say Easter, happy holiday. For who all don't say that, have a wonderful Sunday. That's all I can say about that. Kendall R., thank you. Love to Kendall R. Right there, engaging in the chat. Awesome moderator. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you all. I will talk to y'all soon. And have a wonderful Sunday. Love y'all.